everybody, it's Angie the Coder, and today, um, for this free tool Friday, I am going to show you how to go out to the internet and go to some of the Medicare um, websites and find free audit tools for ENM and free ENM auditing um, software. So. Uh, for those of you that are like me and you're always looking for a less expensive way to do things, um, this is going to be the video for you. So let's do this. Okay, so we're out here on Novitis's website. And what we're going to do is go to this tab that says Evaluation and Management, then go to the Interactive Score Sheet. And then we will start from there. Now, don't worry if I did that too fast because I do plan on putting the address, the web address to this, this interactive uh, EM worksheet in the comments below. So you don't have to figure out how I got there. You can just click on it and it should take you directly there. So we, here we are. And what you want to do is you want to agree, accept the terms of agreement. And then you want to come down here and you can read all this later if you want to. But what you want to do is you want to answer this question here. Does the documentation for the service build include the date and legible signature of the rendering physician? So you verify that that's true and you say yes. Now we are actually going to start with this imaginary patient who's in my head. So unfortunately you don't have a note to look at, but um, we may in the future do this again where I actually have a note out there for you guys to look at and you can follow along. But we're going to, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to kind of wing it. So um, hopefully it won't be too rough. So follow along. So you put your chief complaint in and my patient's going to have abdominal pain. And you may not even, I, I would say you probably don't even have to fill this out, but it will be on your sheet at the end if you put it in there. Now you want to tell them what kind of patient is it. This My patient is going to be an established office patient. So you can click that, but as you see, you have all these other options as well. Depends on what the patient, whether the patient was in the hospital, in the office, new, established, initial, subsequent, whatever. Okay. All right, then you get to the history. So for the history... Um, my provider documented an HPI, and what he said was that this patient has had right upper quadrant abdominal pain for the past two days, and that um, it gets um, worse when she eats, and the associated signs and symptoms are that she is also having nausea and vomiting. So we have location, location, duration, modifying, whoops, <laughs> modifying factors and associated signs and symptoms. Now, his review system says the patient um, also reports that they have a fever, they also have diarrhea and, and cramping, so that's uh, constitutional and GI, and then he says all other systems reviewed and are negative. So we're going to give that all others negative. Now, I will be happy eventually to do a whole video just on how that should be properly documented, but for the purposes of this, we're gonna assume that he documented it correctly and give him credit for that. So as you see, so far your HPI is extended, your ROS is complete, and now we're gonna do the PFSH. In my example in my head, my provider only reviewed the patient's current meds, so we're gonna give him just past medical um, history instead of family and social. That gives him a pertinent um, past family and or social history level. So if you come here, it'll tell you the history based on the guidelines we put in for the 1995 guidelines. Now this audit sheet, interactive audit sheet, only works for the 1995 guidelines, gives you a detailed history. Okay, so next we're going to do the 1995, um, uh, I'm sorry, the 1995 exam. My provider provided, uh, he documented by organ system. He did not document by body area, but he could have. So see, there's the body area, and here's the organ system, the other way. And what he documented was constitutional. He documented eyes. He documented cardiovascular, respiratory, GI, skin, neuro, and hematological, lymphatic, and immunological. So he has eight organ systems. That should give us a comprehensive, which it did. 
Now we go to our decision making. The decision making um, has, as you guys know, it has the, the different tables. You have the diagnosis and treatment options table. You have the amount and or complexity of data review table. And, whoops, you have the risk, uh, what we call the risk table or the risk of, sig or of significant complications, morbidity and mortality. We're going to um, go through each one of these tables and figure out what the provider documented. In my note, this doc doctor, this was a new problem to this doctor, and the doctor chose not to need to do any further workup. So we are going to give this a new problem with no additional workup, which is worth three points. So if I put my one in there and I hit go, it calculates it. Get that out of the way. It calculates this as three total points. All right. Had this been a new problem and he did additional workup, he would have gotten four points for that, but he didn't do additional workup, which brings us to the next table. And the next table is this amount or and or complexity of data reviewed. In our scenario, he didn't do any of that. So we're going to leave this as a zero. He did none of these things. Basically, he saw the patient, he did a history exam, and then he did prescribe a, a prescription drug, but other than that, he didn't, he didn't order any testing or do any testing. All right, so this section right here is what we would refer to um, as sort of the, the risk table area. And as you can tell, there's no table. So it's a little scary at first. When you look at it, you're like, wait a minute, whoa, what is this? But for each one of these, these, these each, the presenting problem, the diagnosis or procedure ordered and the management options, these represent the three columns of the risk table, right? And they each have drop down boxes for each level minimal, low, moderate, high. And in, if you notice next to each one of them, there is an I. If you click on that I, it pulls up that section or that column from the risk table. This should start to look familiar if you've done some auditing. You should be familiar with this. So what you will do is you'll read your documentation and you'll determine is it minimal, low, moderate, or high risk based on this little graphic right here, this table right here. Our patient has an abdominal, has abdominal pain. He's got nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and the doctor does go ahead and order a prescription drug. Now, you guys don't have the note in front of you, so you don't know this. I'm just telling you this is what's in my head. Um, like I said, we'll do a legit one of these one day where I actually pull up, um, create a really good faux note, um, and put it up on the screen so you guys can see it and code along with me. But just to show you how this, this works, I would give this guy a low for the presenting problem because it's one um, acute uncomplicated illness and the example is cystitis and sprain because this guy he you know it's not to me it's not really self minor it's not self limited or minor because he really you know he was having enough symptoms and enough pain that he decided to come on into the doctor's office the doctor decided over the counter medications weren't enough that he really felt like the patient needed a prescription so i kind of feel like this borders you could have gone minimal or low but i would have gone low with this so let's do that let's close the box i have to be careful because the back button is not your friend here do not hit the back button <laughs> you'll have to start over all right so go to your presenting problem and i'm going to pick low and now it'll populate now, the diagnosis, the diagnostic procedures ordered, there were none. He didn't order any. But if you want to see that, you can click that button and it'll show you what your options would be had he ordered some. And that's what, say for instance, if he had ordered a lab that required a venom puncture, or say a urinalysis, um, or he had done an ultrasound of the patient's stomach or something, that would have been minimal. But he didn't, so we're going to leave it blank and see what happens, right? So leave it blank and let's go to the next one. The management options selected. The only management options that my doctor documented was that he was going to prescribe, he wrote a prescription for a prescription drug for the patient. So you pull, hit the I button and you pull this up and if you come down to moderate, you'll see it says prescription drug management. So that is what we're gonna choose. We're gonna choose moderate. So you can close out of that 
Now, if you know these or you have like a risk table on your desk, you don't have to keep hitting that I, but it's there for you, nice and convenient. But you just hit the down button, the down arrow, and then you pick your moderate. Now, if you look, it's picked the level for you. The level is moderate complexity. So the level decision making has been decided now. And see, leaving this blank, you still got the level that, you know, you still got a level. It didn't make us go back and fill that in. And there are times when there's going to be nothing to put there. So just leave it blank. All right, time. Our doctor is not documented by time, so we can just ignore that whole section. And um, at the bottom it tells, based on the 1995 guidelines, a history is detailed, the exam is comprehensive, the decision-making is moderate, and your final code is 99214. It is going to ask you a few more questions. Do any of the following apply? Was this a teaching physician? No, so we don't check it. Um, was this an incident to a physician service? No, we're not going to check it. Was this a split shared visit? No. And was there any documentation done by a scribe? No. So you are done. And so you can actually hit, and I'm not, I don't think it does anything, but you can actually hit this print button. And I can send this to my printer, which I'm not going to do, but I was thinking it would do a preview, but it does not do a preview. Anyway, when you get done, you can print it, and then you can just clear the score sheet, and then you could see, you could start over again. So this is free to you. I have to pay, you know, I actually um, use the AAPC coder, and I use their EM tool, but if I didn't have that, and I, you know, couldn't afford to do that, this would be a really cool option. Well, that is the interactive EM score sheet for Novitis. Uh, in the next Free Friday, I will probably be doing um, the Novitis um, score sheets. And this is where they are to give you a little preview. So we'll actually go over um, how to use the Novitis score sheets. And in future Free Tool Fridays, I'll be going out to Palmetta and Noridian and showing you what free tools they have. So stay tuned for that. And um, thank you for watching. Hey, if you like what we're doing here, give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And it really helps the channel. And please subscribe and leave your comments in the comment field below. If you have any questions or comments, that's where they go. Anyway, till next time.